what's up guys so i don't know if you feel the same but i always felt like people doing all these cool sounds with guitars all these two three note voicings that sound so cool i mean g major is is awesome but i don't know there's something kind of magical about these sounds on guitar and what i want to talk about today is exactly that when I started playing guitar uh, and I heard people do these kind of things, I always thought it's really magical and I had no idea what's happening there. Now I have a few um, points of reference that makes everything a little easier and I just want to share these kind of ideas with you guys. So we're going to talk about these kind of concepts and how we can basically obtain these sounds and chords and, and little intervals, um, you know, that sounds so, so lush and, and just beautiful on guitar. And we'll do it in five levels. Let's do it. One. So I want to start right now with taking a simple chord. We'll take G major chord. But instead of playing it this way, we'll just listen to the center of it, if you will, the, the try, the one, three, five. So one, three, five, quite literally. So if I'm thinking letters, G, B, and D, right? I'm just playing open strings, super simple. I think solfege, so sol, si, re. And then what I'm gonna do is just take this sound, these three notes, and invert them. So just play in one area of the guitar, the same chord, the same three notes, in different combinations. Let's do it together really slowly because I feel pretty strong about it that this is kind of like the basis for all these cool embellishments. If you like this kind of content and want to make sure I can make more of this kind of stuff, please check out the Patreon. There's a PDF for this video and also a ton of PDFs. There are three um, kind of levels on Patreon and they all have different things. Um, it would mean a lot if you can check it out and support. Whether it's on a jazz song, a blues song, or a pop song, we always hear these like little feels, little lines that connect these, these dots and, and we can definitely explore these ideas, but I do feel that the, the kind of like ground zero or how to build and how to be flexible with this information is really understanding what's you know underneath it. So I feel like the try is a really, really good place to talk and to start with. So we'll take this G major. And like always, you wanna really make sure it's clear, the fingering, take your time, listen to the notes. So I'm just gonna play it here in this position one time. And then we'll play it together. And when I'm playing this, I am thinking about the notes. I'm thinking about the sound that I'm hearing. So again, slowly and in time, three, Four, one, two, mm -hmm. just clarity. And I'm really aware of the notes. So when I'm playing this shape versus this shape, although it's all G major, I am thinking, oh, this is G major in first inversion because it's C, Re, Sol, B, D, G, or this is root position, Sol, C, Re, G, B, D. please hit the like button and subscribe. Two, when you're doing these ideas, I think one of the most important things, and this is how to make this actually stick and for you to be able to utilize it, is to hear it. Um, so we're gonna take it slow. Instead of just moving around fast and trying to you know, be overwhelmed with the information, we're gonna just listen really slowly and, and peacefully. So, so Okay, this is the try. This is G major. This is how it sounds. Can't really bend here. Maybe a little bit. And this is how it makes me feel. You know, G major has a certain vibe, a certain energy to it. And this is how G major first inversion feels. sing the bass so, si, re, so, si, re, so. right so this is this is me playing literally the inversion for G major across the guitar here but I'm also trying to hear the bass motion so again together slow so, si, So, 
when we're working on music, we have to make this emotional finger ear connection. Otherwise, it's not gonna really stick because we're dealing with sounds and I feel, again, we're trying to express ideas and create with it and maybe do all these cool things people do. But in order to do all these things, we want to make sure that the information is really clear and sticking. And for that, I feel like the strongest way is really hearing it and also understanding it. So when you're playing this, make sure you understand, oh, this is B, this is D, and this is G. This is D, G, and B. Okay, I understand. And again, it might take a moment to work with it, but this is, you know, if you're serious about guitar and music, this is a really good investment. Three. All right, so let's say we took this position here and we understand G major. Now, we want to feel free. When I'm playing and, and working on music, I definitely, um, one of my goals is to feel free to create and interact on stage or when I'm writing, working on things. So again, I don't want to be limited to one position. So right now we'll do kind of like maybe three main areas of G major on the guitar. So we have this one, do this real quick. This is the first maybe area. And then we can start from this one, from the first inversion and just go forward here to this G major here. And you can uh, ascend, descend, and you can really see the notes. And if you can't yet, it's fine, you will. You know, you can see this shape here of this G, right? This G major. So you can see how I'm breaking it down to the inversions. And I'm, again, thinking, see, Etc. I'm really thinking about the notes because later on I want to I want to be flexible so I can adjust them and change them when I'm creating so it's kind of like an investment for the future in a way next position maybe I'll start here again with this acoustic guitar it's not the most comfortable but you see it's still doable and you can continue descending to the root you can always take one set of string, for example, the, the you know the last three, and just do this G kind of shape and run it. These are the more common ones, but you can also do this one. There's no nothing wrong with these shapes or these shapes, right? So it's like it's all it's all G. Four. Okay, so now what happens if you want to try and adjust it just a little bit? We'll take the same position here that we had and now I'm gonna break it down into two notes instead of three I'm gonna just grab the first two notes and check this out I can do uh -huh. and then what happens is we have these intervals that start appearing what are these intervals we have a major third a major, yeah, major third a minor third a fourth major third minor third fourth when I'm playing some lines, maybe I want to fill in a little bit of interval. And again, this interval for me symbolizes or kind of like suggests G major. So I don't have to always play G or G or different full chords. I can just play even maybe a fourth. Again, it's a sound and a color, but especially if you have a bass player or a piano player you know, that's playing something, maybe all you need is just a little thing. And, and I think like that's the idea when we hear these sounds and we work with them and we understand what we're doing, it all gets really, really flexible and really cool. So what I want to do with that is not only taking those intervals, basically two notes, but doing an approach note. So it will sound like this. Right, so I'm basically playing the same thing, the G major, but I'm just playing a half note, a half step beneath it every time with the two notes. But it's already sounding cool. You can do the same thing with the full triad. It will sound like this, right? So basically F sharp. Like, well, here we, we can't, we were missing one note, so it will be like a little thing. F sharp to G, just chromatic. What I'll do is I'll, and we can also take the three notes. For example, 
Here, well, we, we need another note here, but it's gonna be like a little F sharp augmented for a second to G major, but all these are gonna be fine because I'm not using open string. But it's a, such a cool... It's a cool sound. It's just like a really cool... Yeah, I just love it. Five. It's great and we understand G major, but also what about G minor? So right now I'm just gonna go quickly over the same idea with G minor. So these three kind of points in the guitar that we can see these chords. And again, we can do it with two notes or three. I'll do three notes so we have the full kind of G minor sound. It's basically the same shapes. So when I'm working with this, I'm thinking, you know, really the same idea. So listening to the color and how how this sounds you know how it makes me feel so I can really tag this information one area maybe second area would be here and I can just descend, ascend descend maybe third area will be here and you can adjust it if you want Six. This is probably, again, the most important one that I need to remind myself as well. So sometimes as guitar players or musicians, you know, we tend to kind of like practice elements and it's great. It sounds great and it's fun to practice. But at the end of the day, we want to make music. And I think um, it's really important to try and create with the elements. So I think for me, I always try to take these pieces, right, that I'm working on, even if it's just like a little thing, and I'll try to make some music with it. I'll try to, you know, play a blues or try to write a song. I do something that I can actually utilize this information. So a really good way for me that I find, for example, using these ideas is just taking a few lines and kind of switching between a line and these dyads slash triads. Even what just happened, right? I was just playing this G idea, and our exercise with the chromaticism was like kind of just I just heard that sound. So I think practicing these shapes, seeing them, and hearing them would just you know would lend itself to hearing these ideas when you're soloing and when you're working. But just remember to dedicate. Um, an equal amount of time maybe to improvising and utilizing the information versus just being in the lab and practicing. Thanks so much for listening guys. I hope this was helpful in some way and interesting um, and I'll see you very soon. Peace. Thank mm -hmm. you.